Before the review starts, there are some warnings. 1. Today's movie involves rape and murder, both depicted in an extremely graphic way. So if you end up watching it after this review, please be aware of that. Anyway, Last House on the Left is the directorial debut of legendary horror director Wes Craven. It was sort of a partner work project with producer Sean S. Cunningham, who would later go on to direct such movies, uh, movies such as Friday the 13th and Friday the 13th. Anyway, due to the graphic nature and distur- graphic and disturbing nature of the film, some of the footage was, footage was actually destroyed. So, how disturbing was it, or is it rather? Let's discuss. The plot of this movie revolves around two teens, Mary and Phyllis, who are out for a good night of fun. Anyway, as they are out, they just as they are out, they decide to try and score some of that good Mary Jane. But instead of Mary Jane, they they end up in the hands of escaped criminals, and all just and it all just goes down for hell from there. So yeah, that's the basic plot of Last House on the Left. It may not seem like much, but the way that entire premise is executed is, is just so disturbing. The grittiness of the camera work makes it just so realistic, and it's just so depressing every time it cuts back to their parents wondering where their daughter is while a gang of lunatics are holding her prisoner. The fact that some of this even feels like a snuff film is what makes it even more disturbing. Not much else to say, not much else to say except, good lord. I give plot a B minus. Next is acting. And for a low budget film, a little over 80k to be somewhat precise, it's surprisingly decent. Maybe because this is one of those rare occasions where a low budget film wasn't made by a guy obsessed with constant sex scenes and people getting killed after sex. Instead, it actually has some heart. I I desperately wanted these characters to survive and I actually was intimidated by the convicts. I give acting a B. Next is directing, and it was something else. As disturbing the events in this film are, in the film are, some of Wes's or whoever's decisions were just insane. You see, the directing directing choices I do like are the gritty camera quality as well as the cuts to the parents to show just how young these two girls are. That made it a lot more effective. However. They were seen so horrible and so hard to look at, but sometimes they'll have an upbeat upbeat banjo solo as the score for the scene, which I guess creates a contrast, but just does not feel appropriate at times. Then we have the two brain-dead sheriffs who make the one from Mr. Pickles look like Chief Hopper from Stranger Things in comparison. Seriously, these two fuckwits are tasked with finding the two girls, and they still somehow manage to be completely useless, useless to the story other than other than to be comic, comic relief I guess but the subject matter of this movie is not something you should find comic relief for so like near my condition it was unclear what Wes was trying to say at times I gave directing a C- minus. overall Last House on the Left is a very uncomfortable film to sit through you will not finish it feeling good but rather disturbed but if you want an idea of how far West Craven could go, heed my warning from earlier and give it a watch if you like. What I also find I also find interesting about this film is that this isn't even the original cut. No, some of the cut was destroyed by protesters. So who knows what other kind of disturbing footage we could we we may or may not have had the we had the plot pleasure or displeasure of not seeing I'm just speechless about this film I give the last house on the left to see thank you for watching and don't forget to like and sub for more content